after my dad passed away, um, we attended a celebration of life for him that was put on by his publisher, Hay House in Orlando. And as Sage has described, this um, event, this celebration of life is what led us to meeting Karen Noe, um, who we have done this entire program with that we've mentioned at length in our book, who has become a good friend and she's an incredibly gifted medium. And we have received so many incredible um, messages from our dad on the other side through her. And honestly, I feel so blessed to have have her in my life and to have those experiences from her and those messages from her. Um, because sometimes um, she's called at just the right moment when I was feeling down and had something from my dad that was so specific and so spot on. And uh, I know Sage has sort of outlined how we came to how we came to um, meet her and have this opportunity to have this in-person meeting or reading or uh, session or I don't know what you call it with her um, in person at her office in New Jersey. So um, after Sage had after Sage and I had met her, actually maybe it was just no yeah after Sage and I had met her. Um, in Orlando at the Celebration of Life in September, the end of September. Um, Sage ended up connecting with her over Facebook and then they ended up texting and uh, Karen offered to do an in-person uh, session with Sage. So naturally, um, and Sage lived in New York at the time and Karen's in New Jersey. So, uh, you know, they had planned a weekend where they were going to meet in person. So naturally, my mom and my sister Sky and myself just happened to be needing to go to New York that weekend and, um, of course, attend this in-person meeting with Karen. And on the way over to meet her in person at her um, office, each of us had said out loud in the car to each other, just to each other, some very specific things that nobody that um, had Googled us or Go not us, but had Googled our dad, would know things that were specific and personal and um, not Googleable. Um, that if she were really getting a message from our dad or really hearing him and communicating um, the messages from him, that she would mention these things. And we all kind of said out loud what we wanted our dad to say. So we get to her office and Karen um, as you've probably seen from this program, or you will see, uh, she's very petite, she's very soft-spoken, um, she's quiet, she's shy, she's the complete opposite in personality, essentially, of my dad. And when we walk into her office, she says, like, oh, I'm so happy that you guys are here, but your dad is coming in and he's so loud and she starts getting loud and she starts almost taking on this physical presence that was so reminiscent of, of our dad. And she said, you know, don't get mad at me. It's not me that's yelling at you guys, but he's, he's literally st saying, come on, let's go, let's go. You guys are late. What's taking so long? I'm, I've been waiting for this. Come on, let's go. And it's exactly how he used to sound in the morning when he would be rushing my brothers and sisters and I out of um, the house to get to school on time in the morning. You know, this, let's go, let's go, we're late, come on. And she sounded exactly like him. So we all kind of laughed about that. Um, and she kept apologizing, saying, please, it's not me yelling at you, it's him. Um, and so we, you know, it was it was off to a great start. She went around and she said some, um, you know, sort of, not general, but like not that specific things to each of us, just really like nice things at the beginning. This was just at the very beginning. And then she gets to me and she says, and by the way, your dad is coming through so strongly and he's saying, uh, congratulations, you're pregnant. And he just wants to congratulate you and acknowledge that you're pregnant. And my mom and sisters looked at me and I said, no, I'm, I'm not pregnant. I have a six month old. And my dad met my daughter, my daughter, Sailor. Um, so, I don't think he would confuse me having a baby with me being pregnant. So I'm not really sure like what the message, what the message is here. And she said like, no, 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 he is adamant that uh, you're pregnant. And he's saying, uh, Serena, 4th of July, fireworks, fireworks, 4th of July. And I said, well, I was with him on Maui this past 4th of July. My daughter was there with us. She was, you know, three months old at the time. She was a baby. But again, like that's not pregnant. So. I don't know, maybe he means just my baby. He's just acknowledging my daughter. And she said, no, he's saying, 4th of July, fireworks, you're pregnant. And she was repeating this. And I just was like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys, but 
I'll take a pregnancy test the second we leave here. I'm not pregnant. So then she goes on to say really specific things, the things that we had said out loud in the car, things that nobody would know. So as the session goes on, um, her, her insistency that I was pregnant started to take on a lot more um, clout. And so we left, you know, after we wrapped up and we had this incredible experience with her, we left her office and I stopped and got a pregnancy test and took it right then. And I was pregnant and I had no idea. It was the first day I could have even essentially found out that I was pregnant. I had, um, I had no memory of even the possibility of becoming pregnant, but at my dad's celebration in Orlando when I met Karen, apparently, you know, a couple margaritas after the celebration for my dad's life. And, you know, one thing led to another. I didn't even think that I could get pregnant at the time without being too graphic. Um, because once you have a baby and you're breastfeeding, it's just every woman knows that it's not something that you expect is going to happen th that fast. So anyway, um, when we got back from New York, I immediately scheduled an appointment with my, uh, my doctor and the first measurement they take is always the most accurate and that measurement is the one that they use to determine your due date and at that appointment when i got back from new york and i had the um you know the due date calculation done based on the measurement of the baby i was told that my due date was the fourth of july for karen to be the one to tell me before i even thought it was a possibility before i even knew myself that not only was I pregnant, but that um, there was something about the 4th of July uh, associated with this baby that my dad was telling her to tell me. And then to find out that I was expecting a baby and the due date was the 4th of July was just mind boggling to me. And it was definitely a very clear communication <laughs> from him on the other side that, um, that he's still present and he's still involved in our lives. And maybe he even knows more than we even know, um, you know, being in this in this human form. And it was such an incredible moment. But it actually got even crazier if if you know you want to call it crazy. When I was in labor on the first of July, I didn't post anything about being in labor. I didn't, you know, make any announcements, but I was literally at the hospital moments from giving birth and um, my mom and my sisters and my husband were there and I have this oxygen mask on and I'm not to be graphic again but I'm pushing and Sage is getting a call in that moment and she has her phone in her hands because she was going to take pictures when the baby was born and she looks at her phone and she says Serena it's Karen calling and I mean I'm like having this baby like right then and I pull off my oxygen mask and I say answer it and she literally answers the phone and says, hey, Karen, like, what's going on? And Karen says, um, sorry to bother you, but your dad was like insistent I call in this moment. And like he said that, you know, he 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 said to call you, even though this is for Serena. But he said that like Serena wouldn't be able to answer the phone right now. So he said to call you. I had to call you, Sage, right in this moment. And um, Sage said, yeah, well, Serena's um like pushing so she couldn't answer the phone right now and Karen said well your dad it makes me cry she said your dad wanted her to know that he's right there and um I mean she called at the exact moment and you know it was just again such a confirmation that he was still communicating and present from the other side and um and my daughter Windsor Wayne <laughs> was born on the 1st of July and her due date was the 4th and I just think it was just such an incredible um, experience having that entire pregnancy um, told to me <laughs> essentially from my dad after he passed away up until the moment of her birth him letting me know that he was still um, with me and with all of us and I'm so grateful to have had that experience. And one of the things I want to say briefly about um, about a lot of the signs and the communications and the messages that we received after my dad passed away, not not all of them came through Karen or through a medium or through a psychic. A lot of them, a, a huge 
huge number of them for each of my family members and myself came from this sort of internal feeling or intuition and this in this sort of like thought that would just pop into my head or suddenly um, I remember one time I took my daughter for a walk and I was just thinking about my dad and I was feeling so overwhelmed and I stopped to take a picture of my daughter in the stroller because she was doing something cute and on the sidewalk where I stopped carved into the cement was Wayne with a heart uh, like somebody had carved their name when the cement was drying there were so many things like that that took place and the reason I want to point that out is because although obviously we were so incredibly grateful and appreciative to have these messages and these communications come through the form of Karen and um, other friends and, and mediums and psychics um, one of the things that I came to really understand was that you don't have to have a medium give you the message in order for you to connect with your loved ones on the other side. That many times it was something that came from, um, you know, not a, a medium or psychic, but something that just came from a really incredible synchronicity or um, a really incredible sort of intuition or feeling. and. I believe that one of the reasons that, um, and Sage and I write about this at length in our book, one of the reasons that we received so many signs and so many messages was not because Wayne Dyer was our father and he's this great spiritual guy and he's got more like spiritual ability than other people's loved ones on the other side, um, although I'm sure he would like us to think that. I think that uh, one of the reasons we received so many signs and communications and messages is because we were never not expecting them. We were never doubting that they would happen. Maybe in the first day that he passed away, in the first few hours when I was asking for that first sign, I had a moment or two of doubt. Um, but truthfully, we were, we were raised, we were really raised on this idea that, um, that, that you are, that when you are in alignment with what it is you are seeking, when you are open to what it is that you are asking for, when you are open to receiving guidance and not attached to the way it's delivered, to how it's delivered, to the package that it comes delivered in. In other words, when you're open to just receiving and you surrender the attachment to the how and the when and the why, you're able to get so much more, um, so much more uh, spiritual guidance or, or signs or synchronicities from your loved ones or from your angels or whoever it is that you're seeking guidance from that oftentimes we miss the messages or the signs that our loved ones are sending us because we are so attached to it coming in the form of a specific song or a specific moment or a specific date. And when that doesn't happen, um, we, lose, we lose our openness, we have doubt. And, and for a lot of people, actually, I believe that they are never even um, expecting it or desiring it or open to receiving this type of guidance from any spiritual teacher or any loved one on the other side that um, that for many people, the possibility of it happening is, it's just not possible in, in their minds and therefore they don't experience it. That in order to receive what it is we are seeking, we have to be willing to surrender our attachment to the how and the when and the why. and. Um, and I think that that is one of the key things that made it, um, that made the messages and the signs and the, and the synchronicities so abundant, particularly in the beginning after our dad passed away, because we never expected anything less. And so we were always paying attention and um, we were never disappointed. If you'd like to see more, click the link below and you'll gain access to hundreds of transformational education programs on the Humanity Stream Plus platform.